How did a man with ties to a neo-Nazi group evade detection and land a job with the Lafayette Police Department? Well, this is a discovery exposing an unsettling problem in police recruiting across Indiana. Tonight, our Sandra Chapman takes us to the front lines of this fight where those combating extremism are now taking notice. A proud moment now and an embarrassing admission for the Lafayette Police Department. This was a mistake. We own it 100%. Lafayette Police say it was a mistake to hire Joseph Zacharek, a recruit with neo-Nazi ideologies that went undetected for months. Lafayette Police didn't know about his ties until someone tweeted, it looks like you just hired a Nazi. Within hours of the post, Zacharek, a New York native and former tank crewman for the Army, was fired. The probationary officer was hired back in June and had no enforcement action or uniform contact with the public. But for 11 weeks, he got a front row seat to police training and tactics at the Indiana Law Enforcement Academy, training extremists and their groups can exploit. Somebody was actually hired by your department. How concerning is that? It's very concerning to us, and it's something we take very seriously. The Southern Poverty Law Center says national socialist and neo-Nazi organizations are known for their hatred for Jews and other minorities. They're one of 20 designated hate groups across Indiana. Terry Turchi is a former FBI counterterrorism expert. Should we be concerned that they're trying to get into government agencies or into police departments? Absolutely. It means we should cast a light on the whole background process. Before a recruit can attend the ILEA, they must pass a polygraph, a background check, a merit board interview, medical exam, and a psychological exam. The goal is to detect any red flags. But 13 Investigates has discovered a glaring problem. Aside from criminal histories, not all departments conduct the same level of background checks. And the ILEA simply accepts whatever the departments provide. I think we could do a better job in the background investigation. We will explore every opportunity for training that we can find and shore up any deficiencies that we have in terms of the hiring process. The executive director of the ILEA declined to speak on camera about the gaps. So we posed our questions to one of the most experienced agencies dealing with extremists. Someone tied to a neo-Nazi group is able to be hired by a police department and is able to then learn training and figure out what law enforcement do. They're infiltrators. I share your, your concern that it is a concern, but the hiring processes uh, and procedures of a, a local office would be outside the purview of the, the federal government. Robert Alex Middleton is the assistant special agent in charge at the Indianapolis FBI field office. The FBI sees on average 60 incidents a year in Indiana, many involving violent extremist groups. What we are seeing across the nation and the state of Indiana is an increase in how we define uh, racially or ethnically motivated violent extremism. Our efforts uncovered elaborate plans to endanger the lives of law enforcement officers, government officials. Government targets are a close second, like the alleged kidnapping plot aimed at Michigan's governor. I never could have imagined anything like this. Middleton says that incident was foiled and arrest made due to joint work with police. We're not wanting people to be hatching terrorist plots and kidnapping politicians, whether they agree with them or not. In the Lafayette case, Zacharek's blog writings from 2016 were obtained by an unidentified person who tweeted the information to the department just weeks before Zacharek's law enforcement graduation. In the post, Zacharek allegedly identifies himself as a national socialist and writes, it wasn't until I started working as an EMT in the inner city that I openly questioned the view that all races are equal. This was information that was not available to us during that background investigation. Deputy Chief Bishop believes hackers gained access to the blog in question, which was taken down in 2018. Are there lessons learned from that? Yes, and we've, those have been made painfully obvious right now. The big question remains, what about the next small department the next time?